everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Spotlight, where we give you a glimpse of the shows that are produced here at Access 21, the behind the scenes glimpse, and introduce you to the producers who produce those shows. Right now, I have in the studio with me Miss Cheryl Footman of Cheryl Footman Ministries. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you here. And as I introduced your show is Cheryl Footman Ministries. Why don't you tell our viewing audience a little bit about your show? Well, I'm excited to be a producer with Access 21. First of all, I must say I enjoy um, being a part of the producers here. Um, the, uh, it's been very warm and very welcoming. So with that in mind, having said that, I enjoy ministry. I enjoy talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's called me into the ministry, and um, I do this full time. I love doing it, and I, I guess, as you know, every opportunity I get to have a discussion about Christ, I take that advantage to do so. Okay. You know, and um, my calling is teaching. Teaching. So I'm always in a teaching mood. Okay. Mode. Mood. Mode. That's all right. Mode. Well, same. You know, <laughs> a teaching it mood applies. as well as a teaching mode. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you get into ministry? When and how? Well, I kind of, uh, I guess I can't say kind of. I saw my mother, I saw a miracle happen mm. when I was nine years old. Wow. Um, by, through my mother's prayer. And I said, I say prayers because she prayed every day, every day, continuously. When I was nine, I had two brothers in the, um, I'm not trying to give away my age, but in the Vietnam War, okay, okay, <laughs> it was a very, very. It was probably the worst war that America has had. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. would say their family member being in a war would probably was probably the worst, but Vietnam was a very bad war, and um, I had two brothers there at the same time. Okay, and um, but I would just see how my mom would be on her knees every day praying for my brothers, mm -hmm. and in the midst of that, it's like. The flow, the flow model, model TV. That's back in the day, okay. but mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. it was a, a nice TV. I would see the TV and see the wall on TV, and then in our area, we would have our neighbors. You know, every week a neighbor's child was coming home. You know, passed away. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so I, I'm a nine. I mean, I was seven at the time because the war was two years. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering if my brothers were going to make it back alive. Mm -hmm. But my mom just was, she couldn't bear the idea of having to bury a child, you know. Yeah. That was back during that time. People really, really loved the kids. Now, I'm not saying they don't love the kids now, but it was a different type of way, a different way they showed their love. Okay. Because we did get the whoopings, you know. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I got I know you, you can't be kids now, but <laughs> they say they did it out of love. But, uh, <laughs> I'm sure most of us didn't feel any love in that. But later on, we saw what what they meant. Right. But at that time, you know, seeing it going back and forth like that from the TV, then the neighborhood, then back to my mom on her knees praying, mm -hmm. my brothers came back. Mm. They both came back without a missing fingers. Wow. And the thing about it, you heard if you heard the stories that they told us when they got back. Mm. You knew there was only the protection of God that took care of them. I see. I remember one story. My brother was talking about how they were running back to the barrack with their guns. Mm -hmm. It was him and another guy running side by side with their guns trying to make it back to the barrack. Mm -hmm. He made it back, but the other person ended up going and running into the helicopter propeller. Oh, my. That is how close mm -hmm. to death he was. You know, yeah. but, um, and at nine, that was a miracle for me. So ever since then, yeah. I said, I said, Lord, I'm going to look for you, and I'm gonna, not going to stop until I found that God that answered my mother's prayers. I see. Because I'm saying, growing up, how cool would that be mm -hmm. to pray and be able to have your prayers answered like that, you know? So it made you curious. It made me curious. About and I got a higher hungry power. And I got hungry and you got about hungry. it. Yeah. Okay. And where was this that you grew up? You, cause you're not from Charlotte, right? No. Okay. Where? What area? South Carolina. Okay. So we call not it far South from Kekulaki. South Kekulaki. <laughs> okay. So, and I'm just trying to get um, an idea of of your different travels because we're going to talk about how you went overseas okay. in a little bit. But just staying right here about your experiences as a child. 
and experiencing that, what was the next step in terms of your growth and your evolving to get to where you are now where you're doing ministry? Well, coming up, um, of course, uh, my pa our parents made us stay in church. But like any other teenager, you know, you, you take off on your own and you got to experience the world for yourself. Mm -hmm. And everything was not peachy cream all the time for me. I'm not going to say I was a perfect kid, a per perfect person. Mm -hmm. And that's why I can tell anybody that you don't have to wait until you stop this or stop that. You just get on the path of seeking Christ and then the Holy Spirit will bring you in. Um, I, I'll give you, I'll share with you one um, example of that. When I was about 20, 21 or something like that, mm -hmm. I had a son which was two years old. Mm -hmm. And um, no, maybe I was 23 because I had him when I was 21. <laughs> okay. So I was about 23 years old. And, um, but I had gone to California first. I mean, I'm sorry. I had gone to Indianapolis to, because I wanted to get away from home gotcha. so I can have my freedom. You gotcha, know? gotcha. So I went away and um, ended up picking up a smoking habit. Mm. I used to smoke, smoke cigarettes, um, a pack, almost a pack a day. And they were cool lungs. So they were very, very hard cigarettes. But God had a calling on me. And this one day I'm at the gas station and I saw a woman walking down the street smoking a cigarette. And what I saw was a hag. Mm. I actually literally saw a hag. That's what she looked like to now, me. Some people in this generation don't know what a hag is. Come on, talk about what is a hag. <laughs> <laughs> she was scary looking. It almost looked like it wasn't a ghost. It was a person. Um, she just was really, 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 really dark. Now, I'm not saying that being dark is, is what makes you a hag. I'm just saying this person was just smoking, and she was just almost just really, really dark. I could barely. She looked like a shadow. So you I put mean it like she that. looked very um, disheveled, and then part of that disheveledness was just um, looking like a shadow? Yeah, pretty okay. much. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, couldn't, I knew it was a real person, mm -hmm. but it really didn't look like a person. It just looked like a scary being, okay. uh, something scary I saw. And she was smoking a cigarette. And at that very particular time, I decided no way. I, I did not want my son to have a mother that looked like that. Okay. Just walking down the street smoking his cigarettes. So I started praying calling on the God now that my mom taught me about. Mm -hmm. And um, I started praying and then I'm crying at the same time because I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't stop smoking. So I'm smoking, praying, crying, smoking, praying, crying, just going in a cycle like that. And maybe about, I said it wasn't no more than about, uh, I can't even say it was two months, two months. I felt a spirit just left me. It mm. just left like a feather, just, just left. Mm. I immediately had no taste, no desire for cigarettes and okay. have not smoked since then. And that was 23. When you were 23? Yeah. Okay. So I won't tell you how old I am now, <clears throat> but it's okay. been many, many, many years. That's okay. <laughs> I had no desire. I just, it just stopped immediately. So. I'm just saying that it can happen for anybody. And you, you're um, describing a, an experience that led you to, what I was asking about evolved in ministry, right? And taking better care of yourself. Yes. Okay. Well, I started. I le actually learned how to de depend on Christ more and more and more. I started surrendering my life to Him even more because I couldn't make myself quit. You know, mm -hmm. so. And it just continuously, throughout my life, those miracles happen. Okay. So you've had several other incidents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just all through my life. I even wrote a book about it, about all the miracles. that. In that particular book, there is 20 miracles. Well, one thing I know you have spoken about on your show and just here is about how you um, received healing. And your, was it your kidney shutting down or something? Let's talk about that since we're talking about this subject of um, doing things that better benefit your body and then giving, giving you a more spiritual awakening. 
So right. elaborate on that. Because there are three parts to man. Of course, we have our body, we have our mind, which is the soul, and then we have the spirit, the spirit which comes from God, the spirit of truth. So in my search for God, I found that spirit, and, it, and he filled me with the spirit, which okay. is known as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which is the spirit Adam and Eve had before they committed the sin. So the spirit of, uh, of uh, life is what he gave me. Okay. So in the meantime, as I continue on in life, um, he just showed me so many, so many things, but I'm still flesh. So I was taking vitamins because I got into this health kick. I was just taking too much protein and not enough oils and not okay. enough carbohydrates. Okay. But I was just gung ho about staying in shape, mm -hmm. and that's what messed my kidneys up. Okay. And um, when I was uh, over in South Africa, fast mm -hmm. forward, mm -hmm. my kidneys <clears throat> just totally shut down. I was on the treadmill running, as a matter of fact. Wow. And but I couldn't gain any weight. Mm -hmm. But I just loved to exercise, and um, and all of a sudden, everything just shut down. I mean, my arms started sagging. Everything started sagging. And I said, oh my God, I know something, something just happened. I don't know what it was. So I went and I just left the gym and went and lie down and just asked God, what just happened to me? And he eventually told me my kidneys shut down. Both of them shut down. Okay. I had no function in kidneys, y'all. And I took a picture of it. It's on my website. And I... Uh, what you mean you took a picture of, a picture of yourself? Of me, or yeah. you went to the doctor and there's a picture that came from x-rays or scans? What no, are you saying? No, actually, I just took my camera because of the way I had looked. Okay. Outside, out Oh, no, out okay. I could tell that something was wrong with me. And mm -hmm. I took the picture because I said, wow, this got to be a testimony. <laughs> okay. I didn't even know what it was. Uh-huh. I said, this has got to be a testimony because I just couldn't gain. I was so skinny. I, mm -hmm. I'd say I was like 90 pounds. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Maybe I was real thin. Yeah. And um, and about a year later, God told me that I had no function in kidneys. Okay. But a year later, he jump-started my kidneys back. Okay, so if you will share with us how you say God showed you and told you that he, um, that you didn't have kidney functioning well, I was properly. In, I was in church. I mm -hmm. was at this particular church because I had to go to South Africa for a mission. Mm -hmm. God sent me there for a, a, a Jonah, a Jonas, it was a Jonah, Jonah and the whale, mm -hmm. was a Jonah and the whale. I had a Jonah experience. <laughs> he sent me over the waters because I had to go take care of some things in the church for him. Okay. So while being there, um, after, after he, let me tell you this right quick as a testimony. I did not go to anybody. I did not go to a phone number. I did, not even, I did not even go to an address. God told me to go, and I got a little scared at first. I mean, about the last couple of weeks trying to go across this water. I'm saying, God, you really want me to go over this, over this ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and don't know anybody? And then he quickly reminded me of the time he took me to California, and I only had $75 in my pocket, yeah. and I stayed for two and a half years mm -hmm. over there. Okay, so we're, we're talking about how he told you about your kidneys and you're telling us you were going somewhere. He showed you to go to an address somewhere. No, about when I went to the kidneys. When I went to South Africa, I didn't have anybody I went to. Okay. But he provided, provided everything for me. And you're talking about, are you talking about the um, time that he was showing you about the kidney issue? Right. Or the time to show you about where you needed to go to to do some things in well, ministry. Well, what, do you, what do you say? Well, I guess I was leading up to when I was staying at a particular house he had provided for me to okay. stay at. Okay. That's when he told me that my kidneys had shut down. Okay. Because shortly after that, he started my kidneys right back up. Okay. I went from death to life. Because mm -hmm. you can see death. Mm -hmm. You can see death in my I see, face. I see. And just all of a sudden, one day, when I was staying at this house, and then I saw myself in the mirror, and mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, mm -hmm. look at God, then jump-started my kidneys back. And, um, and I took a picture of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 
I just had a, oh man, it was just amazing. Some people have gotten converted. Just seeing the before picture and after picture with you. They couldn't believe, yeah. they couldn't yeah. believe the miracle in yeah. seeing how okay. I went from looking like this to looking like that. Okay, so um, in, in everything that you're talking about, has he given you things? Because there's, there's lots of things that we also can eat and to maintain the, the jump start yeah. and the things that we ingest. How, how are you doing, doing with that? that? Uh, everything is God. He's teaching me how to eat. Okay. He's definitely teaching me how to eat. Mm -hmm. I can't, I mean, of course, we all know we should stay away from junk food, but I do like, we like, sometimes we like junk food. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, I may have a junk food, but the spirit tells me, it moves in a way to let me know, don't eat that. Yeah. It's guiding me right through my food to the point where now I know I will eat carbs. I will eat some carbs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, and fish is my protein. Okay. So I've gotten away from solid meats and stuff because mm -hmm. anything that is hard can agitate your kidneys mm -hmm. and stress it out. Yeah, yeah. So well, I don't eat hard stuff anymore. Well now, I don't see any of that that you're teaching that part on your show, but I know it's probably coming. Yeah. But what I have seen on your show is when you're talking about that part of you that is in tune to give you the things that you need to say in ministry. And I understand that you also sing. So where did all that come about? Well, I grew up in a family of singers. Okay. My parents, my mother sang, my father played the piano. Mm -hmm. And I'm 12, I'm number 12 of 13 kids. What? Yeah, I'm number 12. You're like my mom's generation. Yeah, they yeah, had a yeah. lot of kids. <laughs> and so they were the footman sisters and they were the footman brothers. Okay. And they made me sing ever since three or four years old. I was wow. always singing. Okay. Yeah. Y'all were trying to be the Jacksons, weren't you? I think the Jacksons were trying to be us. We're a little bit older than them. Oh, even though they didn't okay. know about <laughs> they, Even though they didn't know about you. <laughs> but well, yeah. Okay. Pretty and, much. And so I mentioned that too because on your show, on your program, you have your opening and you have part of that is your music, your original music. Right. Did you start that? I know you said you, you grew up singing. But in terms of, of actually starting to sing and write songs, did you do that when you were overseas? Actually, the song that is on my program, the opening song, mm -hmm. let me state this. I am not a writer. Okay. And neither do I um, put music together. Okay. It is just all totally... I get this music when I'm in bed sleeping at night. Interesting. Okay. The Holy Spirit just bring it to me. Okay. I wake up in the middle of the night. I got a rhythm. Okay. I got a rhythm. So I either sing it in my phone, mm -hmm. or I get on the computer and sing it because mm -hmm. I don't want to forget. Mm -hmm. And when I get up the next day and I try to produce the song or, or shape the song, mm -hmm. believe it or not, the Spirit will tell me, "No, nah, I get a feeling. Don't put that. Don't put that in. Or if I put something." It's good, it's okay. cool, but if I put something in the song that the Spirit doesn't like, it would, he would let me know not okay. to put that there. Don't put it there, okay. Yeah, Yeah. well, the song that you have is original, and of course here we make sure that people, um, make sure that they get permission if there's copyrighted information right. or copyright material that they're incorporating in their shows. Mm -hmm. So it's good that you have your own. <laughs> yeah. You get that copyrighted, and, mm -hmm. and then you know maybe somebody else will want to use that too. Well, Depending I have about 15 of them. 15? I got about 15 songs that are ready. Okay. So I'm hoping to be able to do some concerts soon. Oh, so concerts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would love to. Some free minister stuff. And, okay. Uh, minister. Okay. And music. Okay. Yeah. Well, you do. It sounds like you wear a lot of different hats. And I was touching on South Africa. You've touched on South Africa. What hat were you wearing when you went to South Africa? Can we talk about the travels a little bit? Yeah. I went there mainly as a, I guess, as a, uh, oh, I want to say as a prophet, maybe. Okay. When God send you on an assignment, mm -hmm. your, your, your title is prophet. Okay. You know, okay. There was, that's why you notice all throughout the Old Testament, they're, they're called prophets because they have a, a calling from God to do a job, like mm -hmm. King David. Mm 
are um, Isaiah. They all prophesied of a particular thing, but not only do a prophet prophesy, a prophet carry out the work of God as well. Well, King David wasn't a prophet, now was he? Well, he, was, he, was, yeah. he prophesied. So. He, was, he prophesied, um, even though he was a judge. Yes, he was a judge. You're he was a David. judge. King David. He was a judge okay. of the children of Israel. Okay. So, so when you went to um, South Africa, you felt like that was uh, the assignment that you needed to I, have uh, as a prophet, you're saying? Well, when, when you're given an assignment, it's like the apostles are the apostles. Mm -hmm. Rather they teach, rather they preach, whatever they did. They mm -hmm. didn't wear many different hats, but their title was apostles. So when you went to South Africa, you mm -hmm. felt like you were a prophet. I what was did going you, as a prophet. What did you do and how long did you stay? I went to, there were some things that were happening inside of the church okay. that God was not pleased with. Okay. And okay. I needed to go and delay the message and try to help them to get on path and get on the right track. Okay, so you were going as a part of um, a church that you knew about? Some no. Minist okay. No, just strictly me and the Lord. Okay. He told me to go. Okay, okay. And, uh, and that's how my ministry is. I um, totally okay. work for God. I don't, okay. I don't, kind of, I don't come under any other particular ministry. Gotcha. Because when God called you, Mm -hmm. then you got to do what he tells you. Got you. I got you. So when you were over there, because um, a lot of times, you know, when people talk about their international travels and things, sometimes it's, you know, vacation. Sometimes it's, you know, we really want to go and see um, research or what have right. you. And then what you're saying, this was a unique yeah. sending. Right. And it was something that was just straight out. You had to go yeah. and do it. Complete and somebody, and Yeah. And people's saying. lives were in uh, uh, in in danger. Mm -hmm. This a particular lady, a particular woman and her child could have lost wow. their life. Wow. But God had me to intervene. I see. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it was uh, very, very okay. interesting. So when you talk about um, that kind of ministry and then here we are, we see you on television. How did you get to this point? Wanting to do a show. Why do you think it was necessary? Well, because the ministry that God has given me is I want to teach people how to get to the point where they can have, if, if they're diagnosed with kidneys, cancer, or whatever, that don't mean that you have to die from it. Mm -hmm. The flesh is not bigger than the spirit. The spirit is what you need to sustain life and 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 if the spirit, the spirit comes in by the truth. You have to know the truth. And the truth is the word of God. Okay. And I know a lot of it, sometimes people don't understand. Or sometimes people say, oh, you got to go study Greek. You don't have to do none of that. The Bible is probably the most simplest book to understand. You just need someone to teach it to you. And that's what God has given me. I want to help you to learn how to live and not succumb to death because of this flesh. Okay. That's what my ministry is. <clears throat> okay. There's a verse in the Bible that Jesus said to Martha, mm -hmm. John chapter 11, verse 26. Jesus said, whosoever believeth in me shall never die. If you live and you believe in him, then you shall never die. You don't, just don't have to. You know, at one time there was a thing where everybody was, oh, if I just don't believe in death, I won't die. You know, or if I just don't do this, everybody, nobody wanted to die. Mm. It is possible. And that's what my ministry, but the only possibility of that is through Jesus Christ. Because he is the only one that went in the grave and conquered death and came back to life. So we don't have to die. I can teach you how to do that. Now, when I leave this earth, I'll leave like Christ did. He got caught up in the air. My flesh may stay here, I don't know, but it won't be because my flesh take me away from here. Because kidneys is not the only experience I had. Yeah, well, you said you had several different yeah, situations going on. Yeah, I experienced everything on. pretty much this body can experience. Okay. But with the Holy Spirit being so strong in me, mm -hmm. the body can't, can't take me over. So 
in addition to a lot of the things that you are teaching on your show, you, you go out and you pretty much talk to different people, right, about yes. this um, and about your experiences. I would love to. I mean, every opportunity I get, mm -hmm. I like to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And God has also given me gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do have the gift of he healing. He's given okay. me the gift of healing, and he's given me some other gifts. So when I see people in certain areas, and he's still training me with that, mm -hmm. I, um, uh, he's given me that gift. And um, I want to be in a position where I always wanted to be in a position to help people. I don't like to see people suffer. I don't like to see people in pain. Mm -hmm. And in the kingdom of God, let me say, um, sickness and suffering don't go hand in hand. You can have sickness and not have suffering, mm -hmm. which is my situation, and which is a really real miracle. Even though healing is a miracle, but you can still have a sickness and don't even know you have it. Right. Because God, the Holy Spirit, won't let you suffer from it. Right. So there are different things like that okay. that I, w I can teach you about. Yeah, well, so speaking of teaching and speaking of your program, just kind of going back to some of the um, practical elements and stuff before we have to wrap it up, how did you decide that you wanted to, you know, use the green screen? What made you decide, you know, were you looking at some different things? How did you come to determine the layout of your program? So it would be interesting to people. Well, the way the, the background that I have is is. Cheryl Footman Ministry, mm -hmm. but Jesus on top. Mm -hmm. And it's like sitting on the side of a mountain, sitting on the side of a mountain, because Jesus is a rock. Mm -hmm. He is a rock. And this ministry is all about lifting up Jesus Christ. Okay. So, and then it has like the little sunshine in the back of it because Jesus is the light. Mm -hmm. And the little light is shining in the back of me. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful, I, li I like it, and I've gotten some comments on it Okay. about the background. Well, I tell you what, since we have to wrap have it to wrap up, it why it don't up. you tell everybody when they're going to be able to see your new episodes of your show and what times? Okay, I'm taking you through the Bible from Matthew through uh, Revelation. And what days and, we are and what on times? Saturdays. Uh -huh. At 9 o'clock okay. a.m. Okay. Well, I thank you so much for coming. And <laughs> thank you for having me. And I think everybody will tune in, okay? I, I so, appreciate that. Thank you so much, Cheryl. God bless you. All right. Okay, everyone, thank you also for joining us, and we'll see you the next time on The Spotlight. <laughs>